Okay, so we're going to have to hit a break. Before we do and before we hear more of the cross, I want to actually turn over to our uh, guest right now. I'm joined once again by trial attorney Oscar Michelin and also trial attorney Bruce Rosenberg. Bruce, welcome to the show. Let me start with you real quick. What was your takeaway from that testimony? Because that really just hits the heart. Well, it, it, uh, thank you for having me. It, it impresses me that the witness is, you know, is actually sharing his, his true feelings of what happened to him and how real uh, the effects of the false information were. So uh, I, th I think that it's, it's tremendously powerful uh, testimony, and we'll see how uh, the defense tries to uh, tries to rebut it in uh, cross examination. All right, that's what we'll see. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll be live with the cross. Why is everyone talking about navage and nasal irrigation? I am one who suffers from chronic sinus. Don't ask me to do anything. I'm great, so. Is there a source of the orange? Yes. You've seen the video of Mr. Jones saying they're coming for our guns in hours of your son's shooting. Yes. Correct? Yes. Objection. He has established the plan. So right now we know that. During the trial, he saw that video. So he that, saw the video before this trial, correct? I may have. I honestly don't recall. At any point, did you become aware that Alex Jones believed that the Sandy Hook shooting was a pretext for coming after the gun? Objection. Overruled. So when did you become aware of it? I couldn't honestly tell you. I don't remember exactly. At some point, when I started becoming aware of what was being said and what he was saying, it became clear that that was part of this. So, Bruce, they're hearing this playback of the audio recording, the tape, uh, really the cross-examination by Norm Pattis. What's your take on how far Pattis should go in terms of questioning Mr. Wheeler? Well, I, I agree with Oscar in the sense that I think it's a fair it's fair game that, that he's trying to show that um, there are other sources of the issues that uh, the witnesses faced, meaning that uh, when you get into what's the cause of the damage that affects the amount of the damages. So I think that he should push uh, as far as he can to uh, distinguish, you know, when he became aware of uh, the, the video as well as uh, what the, his position on the Second Amendment rights. I think it's very important. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're probably going to see more of these arguments outside the presence of the jury. They just went on a 20 minute break. We'll see what happens next. Stay with us. Okay, welcome back, everybody. So they're officially in a break right now in the Alex Jones trial. There was just a hearing outside the presence of the jury between the attorneys and the judge regarding how Norm Pattis, the attorney for Alex Jones, is going to continue his questioning of David Wheeler, who was just on the stand, one of the plaintiffs in this case, who lost his son in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting and talked about the pain and distress that he and his family suffered as a result of Alex Jones making comments that Sandy Hook was fake and staged and there were fake actors. Uh, Oscar, I do want to ask you this. We, we do anticipate the testimony of Alex Jones later on today um, or tomorrow. I mean, that's basically determines how long today is going to go with the other witnesses. What can he argue? I mean, what can he legitimately argue as a defense? Because as we know, he can't argue that he's innocent. He can't argue that he didn't intend to defame or anything like that. He can't argue he didn't profit off of Sandy Hook. Based on what we're hearing so far from the plaintiff's case, what would be a legitimate argument for Alex Jones? From his testimony, the best that he could do is that he wasn't the only person saying this, that information about this was out, out there that he might have seen from other sources, that Jones himself might have seen from other sources, that he was just trying to, I guess, you know, exercise his First Amendment rights to free speech as the opinion and that he never meant any direct harm to the people involved. That's going to be a hard sell because you heard him claiming that this person, uh, Mr. Wheeler, who just testified, was actually an actor and playing two roles. I mean, it's, it's yeah. such a stretch. I mean, the other, the other issue is how does, how does this message resonate with millions and millions of people who follow Mr. Jones's website? And I think that's something that he's going to have to answer for. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's what leads me into this. Yesterday, we heard the testimony of Clint Watts, who's this 
expert in social media, uh, basically in terms of this is somebody who is an expert in national security to the extent that he was tracking how terrorists recruit people across the world and was tasked with understanding the way that Alex Jones was engaging with audiences, how a message can be spread and followed. Let's listen to this. Personality of the messenger matter in these analysis? A absolutely. In many cases, particularly in the social media era, uh, the messenger is more important uh, than the message oftentimes. They, if you have an audience that comes to you for a message over and over again, uh, you'll be able to push many messages um, because they have developed a very uh, tight relationship with that messenger. So if they are exciting and charismatic, or if they speak in a way that communicates to the target audience, and they can do that in a repeated way, the audience will come back to them uh, to try and get some sort of ascertain what the truth might be. Okay, and is uh, building trust a part of an effective messenger with yes. their audience? Yes, as a messenger, you wanna build trust with the audience. If you're wanting to sell a product, you need to have the trust of the audience in order to convince them to buy a product, or if you want to shape what they believe, you need to build trust with them as well, so that they will take your version of the truth as a messenger into the into that audience space. And uh, does the degree to which a messenger builds trust with the messenger's audience, no matter how many millions of people those are, uh, factor into the effectiveness of, for example, selling products? Absolutely. That's why you'll you'll see oftentimes that if a company is trying to sell a product. Uh, they will have testimonials um, from messengers or people that have used the product. That is a, trying to build a trusted relationship. Or they'll do it uh, for experts of various different types that might relate to a product. So if it's a healthcare product, they might have a doctor. If it's a car mechanic, uh, they'll probably be talking about auto parts. And uh, just going back to demonization, you talked about talking about an example of Russia uh, what, telling false narratives about mothers killing children or something like that? Yes. Um, does that have, Your Honor, if there's an objection, uh, what's the? Yes. So Bruce, this is important to understand here, right? I mean, if we, the question is, how was it possible that so many people believed this Sandy Hook conspiracy story? You're getting a sense of it. What do you make of it? Yeah, I think I think the, the point or the testimony is how how these stories get amplified, how how uh, phone tags just you repeat something, uh, influencers, social media, it's becoming more and more inf influential and important in our in our society. And I think that establishing the fact that uh, Mr. Jones had a, a, a platform to amplify and to repeat. And as you have repetition, people tend to believe more. They want to believe more. And then they want to support, and then he, he, he would seek to sell products through that same through the same platform. And if they believe him as a reliable source of information, then they're going to believe him as a, as a reliable source for the purchase of products. And so I think there is a connection financially to what uh, Alex Jones was doing. And I think how uh, things are repeated and amplified and influencing all plays into it. And let's just actually continue this a little bit, because I think he was a really important witness. Um, and he talked about Jones's behavior falling into the context of this messenger's personality. Let's take a look a little bit more of his testimony. So for example, uh, slowing down into slow motion, very slow motion. Uh, I can't see the witness. So for example, slowing down uh, in very slow motion, the speech or the address of a grieving father in the aftermath of his son's death, so that can be used to promote a false narrative, is that right? Correct. It can change what the context of the event is or how people understand what actually happened. Okay. And, and, uh, and that can be done uh, uh, for, and, is, and what is the, and that, is that sometimes then done to stoke fear, anger, demonization of, uh, of the target? Correct. Uh, you can use any of those techniques in video to change the context of people's understanding, their perception of what actually occurred. And when you are, uh, when are using these, these uh, emotions, fear, anger, demonization against a target, do you have experience in, does that expose the target to increased risk of harm? It does. Uh, if, they, if they have used information to change people's beliefs or perceptions, it will lead them at times to pursue harms against a target. Uh, if someone's been demonized, uh, they could be the target of something under circumstances where the factual uh, understanding, the real reality of what actually happened uh, is changed, which leads them to do things they may might not already consider, meaning they, they heard a call to action, 
um, they were told that something occurred because of a reason that is false, they may undertake an action because of that. And have you observed and, and uh, examined how these types of uh, narratives lead to harassment uh, in an online community? Absolutely. It, it, the, the range is everything from, uh, you know, harms against children. Uh, it can be involved in terms of criminal activity, uh, mobilizing people to target an individual under false pretenses. Governments, uh, foreign governments against the United States have used it um, to actually try and convince people of things that aren't true, to build anger within a population. And then I, I think the one over the, consistently through my career is extremist, meaning that terrorist groups use this sort of inf information manipulation and make people angry to pursue things as a target. As far as these three are concerned, is it, uh, can you tell us whether the more, the more powerful and uh, the message is conveying fear, anger, demonization, the more exciting, charismatic, bombastic, emotionally driven the messenger, and the more effective the medium, video, logo, the branding, what does that say? Graphics. Cutaways. Oh, Graphics, okay. cutaways, and, and, and embedding emotions. of other media and, and inside. The, okay, and the more that saturates the public, the greater the, the uh, potential for uh, things like uh, harassment threats. Correct. See, I think that's a pivotal witness to call, particularly after what we heard from Brittany Paz, the corporate representative, and also before we hear from Alex Jones. What was your take, Oscar? I think he's by far the most important witness that the plaintiff has called. He makes that connection and explains to the jury how these type of outlandish stories that, you know, used to be in those rags by the supermarket checkout. You know, I had Elvis's alien baby. You know, that's not the case anymore. Social media and carefully crafted messaging now finds the audience that it's looking for and grows that audience by repetition, by these uh, demonization methods, where these outrageous stories now fall on ears that are open to listening to them, that are believing them, and that cause damage to people defamed by them. I think he's really the most important witness the plaintiff could possibly have in a trial like this. All right, let's take a break.